ever since I stopped working and have been home full time, I have loved getting to spend lots of time doing things that I never got to do before. Or maybe I was doing them, but only for little chunks of time that I was able to while working full time and being home very little. One of those things is making homemade yogurt. Made some in our Instapot this time. It was actually very easy. I just added in half a gallon of milk and then set this button to the yogurt setting, which then brought the milk up to a certain temperature. And then I'm waiting for it to cool down to less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm taking a little bit of the heated milk and adding a tablespoon of yogurt, getting that mixed into my slurry before stirring it into the big pot of milk. And then I return the pot back to the Instapot, hit the yogurt setting again, which will then change the time to eight hours. And that's about as much as I can get done these days before getting our little man up from his nap. Next day, my yogurt was ready to be strained. We like really thick yogurt, and so I like to strain it here in a cheesecloth for a few more hours to get really nice thick yogurt. And this is also how you get the whey, which is the liquid that drips off through my cheesecloth and my mesh into the bowl, which I can then use for other things later. This is a really big day for us because we picked up another half a share of a cow and so we have lots of soup bones. We usually have more than can fit in our freezer. And so I take the time right away to get a few bags of bone broth and get them processed and canned up into jars. The Instapot makes quick work of this, and so I'm going to use it as my main tool. I just add in the bones, fill it up with water to the max line, and let the pressure cooker cook for about an hour and a half to get all of the good stuff off of these bones. Now we have an all-American canner, and I think I can fit about six or seven quarts into this canner. So that's at least two runs of broth through my Instapot. That's a bit of a circus, doing the first batch, keeping that semi-warm while the second batch is going on. So I'm filling these jars up with broth, leaving about an inch of head space. I'm making lots of broth here. I now have enough jars filled that I can can them and I am running the Instapot again another time. There's so much good stuff on these bones and I'll probably make another batch that we can just keep in the fridge and use up right away. And then with anything oily that you're canning, you always want to be running cloth with vinegar over top just to make sure that they are nice and clean so that that seal can happen really nicely between the glass and the jelly part of my tin lid. Now this is not going to be a very insightful how-to can with an all-American canner video, but I will quickly run through the steps here. I will leave a link in the description box below to the National Food Preservation website where you can learn about the specifics of pressure canning, as well as some important information about specific recipes, what weight gauge to use, how long to be pressure canning for, etc. Starting by adding two to three inches of hot water into the canner, and then I am rubbing some oil on the inside of the pot to make sure that the lid can get on nicely and not get stuck. And then I can put on my lid and start to tighten my knobs. I'm kind of doing them on a kind of doing two that are opposite to one another so that I can get the lid to tighten very evenly. And then I'm turning on the stove and I'm going to wait until I see a stream of steam like this and then set my timer for 10 minutes. Now I've added my weight and I'm waiting until the pot gets up to the correct pressure. Now I've kind of learned over time that what heat setting on my stove usually gets me to the right temperature and pressure. And I know this also by hearing the jingle on this weighted gauge. And then I set my timer to officially start counting the official pressure canning time. After the time is up, I turn off the stove and I wait for the canner to come down from pressure all the way to zero. Once the dial hits zero, I set the timer for two minutes to make sure all is well before I take off the lid. Now I can start loosening up my knobs and taking off the lid. Now these jars are hot, 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 and so I'm just going to wait a few minutes before I start unloading them onto a little cloth on my countertop where I'm going to let them sit overnight and cool down and make sure that they are well sealed. Now I like to 
take off the rings and make sure that I have a nice seal on every jar and then give it a good wipe down before putting it into the pantry. Now while I was doing the pressure canning, I took the time to make some homemade formula. This is a recipe from the Weston Price website. I will link that down in the description box for you below. And I've been making this for our son to top him up on some more food before going to bed every night. So I'm taking some filtered water and removing just a little bit to get the exact amount. And I'm pouring half of the water into a pan and then adding lactose and gelatin powder, which I'm going to simmer on the stove until they are well dissolved. Once they are dissolved, I'm adding them back into my jar here with the rest of the water and putting it in the windowsill to cool down quicker. <laughs> to cool down and so that the, so the mix can cool down. And then I put it in the windowsill to speed that along. In the meantime, I am going to make in my food processor some milk and cream and that whey that I had left over from the yogurt I made earlier. And the rest of the whey that I'm not using, I'm going to store in the fridge. You can do all kinds of things with this, like baking and cooking. When you heat it up, you lose some of the benefits of this way, but you still get the flavor, so bear that in mind. Before I forget, I'm adding some coconut oil to my warm mixture from earlier and letting that dissolve in there as well. To my food processor, I'm adding some probiotics and then some oils. Here I'm adding olive oil and a bit of safflower oil. I think their recipe calls for sunflower oil, but I only had safflower. And I'm adding, and then I'm adding some nutritional yeast flakes and acerola powder and mixing that all together. I think this time I just didn't have the cod liver oil, but I got that later, and so that's something you should be adding to the mix as well. And then once you've given that a good mix in the food processor, add in the other mix we made earlier and mix that in for a three more seconds. And that's it. Very simple and it tastes so good. I can imagine that this gives a lot of nutrients and good benefits to our babies. Mine seems to love it really. We were young and we were free and running. Never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love A few years later I have started thinking If it's just love in every glass I'm drinking 